Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 64 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am crafting peripheral proxies and a couple other cool things. So what is Direwolf up to today? Uh, today I've decided to try a different... No, not too different, but pretty similar style to video that I usually do. But I wanted to, uh, a lot of the time when I do computer craft code, there's two camps, right? There's people who are like, I don't like to see any coding on camera. And I get that because watching somebody write code in a program is kind of boring. Uh, but then at the same time, usually on the other side of the coin, see like, all right, I wrote all this code between last episode and next, and here it is working. And there's really no understanding of how I got from point A to point B. So this episode, I'm going to try uh, to, to do the best of both worlds. I want to not do any writing of code on camera, but I still want you to kind of see the process from point A to point B to get from where I start with no code to the end with all the code written and all the functionality in place. And I will hopefully be able to make it entertaining for you guys. So uh, those of you who don't like computer craft, I'm hoping that this will continue to work for you and that you'll find this episode at least entertaining. Um, so let me know in the feedback of the comments after you've watched the video and how it worked out for you. So let's get started taking a look at what we're gonna do. All right, guys, so this is building a computer craft code without doing much coding on camera. So what you want to do when you're writing computer craft code is basically start small and conquer one small piece at a time. So what are the goals of this computer craft program that we're writing? Well, first off, we want to be able to track how much Essentia is in each of these jars. We're also going to want to figure out uh, what types of Essentia in the jars, right? So this one is Ordo and it has 18. This one is Air and it has 36. Uh, we're eventually going to configure these jars so that there's only ever one type of Essentia in each jar. So that's something we'll handle in a little bit. So in this case where we have two jars with Air, that's not going to happen anymore. We're going to get rid of that possibility uh, because that will just make it easier for us to write our computer craft program. So we want to track how much Essentia is in each jar, right? And we also want to be able to figure out what items are in this chest and what types of aspects are on the items from the ethereal essence. So those are the two main things that we're going to try and tackle, right? First, analyze each of these essences and figure out which essence is in which slot of the inventory. And we're going to do that by moving one item from here into the aspectalizer, scan it, and record, all right, slot one has Terra, slot two has Ignis, slot three has Prodigio, okay, and going on from there. So that's the first thing we're gonna tackle. Let's tackle just getting this part working. Then we'll worry about the jars, then we'll worry about moving these aspects into here and cooking them down and getting the jars populated. All that stuff we'll handle later. For now, we're only gonna handle taking care of figuring out which aspects are on which item. So I've already written the code for that, and it's very straightforward. We go through each inventory slot. So I did one through 55. So how many inventory slots are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's 54. So I should probably do one through 54 just to be safe. Okay, so all 54 slots in the chest, we're gonna go through we're gonna say, if there's an item in that slot, so we're gonna go through slot one, then slot two, then slot three. If there's an item in that slot, push it to the inventory that's to the north. So I wanna actually change that to west. You can tell I wrote a little bit of this in a test world where things were a little bit different. Um, and then get the aspects on that item. Then we wanna check um, if there's two aspects. And if there are, if the second one's Aurum, then we wanna record the first one. Otherwise, record the second one, right? So if it's not Aurum, record it. Um, and if there's not two aspects, just record the first one. And then pull the item out of the west slot. And let's figure out what it is. So if I run aspects right now, um, you know what, I need to also, because I was going to do some monitor stuff, but we'll get to that later. So let's see. Let's run it now. And we'll see that um, we found which aspects there are. So you can see I wrote a little bit of test code in here. This is always something you're also going to want to do. So if we look, after we figured out everything out, I said what slot has Terra, what slot has Fames, and what slot has Ignis. And if we run this, we'll see that Terra's in slot 1, Fames is in slot 4, and Ignis is in slot 2. Is that correct? Terra is in slot 1, 
Ignis is in slot two, and Fames is in slot four. So now we know that that piece of code is working, and we can move on to writing the next piece of code. The next thing I want to do is figure out uh, which jars exist connected to this thing, and what aspects are currently stored in them. So let's move a few jars around and make it a little bit easier. And we're going to be doing this in stages, so we're going to probably wind up moving this around a little bit. But I guess it would be smart to put things in the right spot from the get-go, so I don't have to wind up moving it later. And it looks like it might be time to sleep through the night real quick. Head back to base, sleep through night. And there we go. By the way, I encountered a bug, and that's why I was having to use the set block command. There was a bug where a block was uh, basically invisible and untouchable, so I had to replace it with Minecraft Air. So I had to basically remove the block from the world. Like I said, I'm using the beta version of the pack currently, so every now and then you run into bugs. It's what happens. Cool. So we'll tap into these guys, and now we can hook into the different types of jars that are plugged in in front of this screen, right? So let's get some modems and some cables, and we'll put the modems on here. And it would probably be a good idea to figure out how I want to run this cabling. So let's just do something real simple like... Well, I want to leave a jar here. So let's do something like this. I guess I have to go under it. I was trying to avoid breaking the obsidian. Oh boy. Creeper sneaking up on me. Well, not the end of the world. Didn't really lose much of anything. All right, let me get all this placed back again, and we'll be right back. So I've just turned on all the modems, and we're going to test the next piece of code that I've also written off camera. So like I said, writing most of the code off camera because I know you guys don't like to see me sit here and type code into a computer screen. That's not the most entertaining stuff. So luckily, I have a lot of that handled. So let's look at the code real quick and just see what it does. And again, it's gonna be a very brief explanation. Um, we want to go ahead and scan what's in the jars currently, right? So we're gonna go through all the jars that we've detected and we're gonna check first to see if it's something that holds aspects. And if it does, we're going to figure out which aspect is in there. And then we're going to figure out how much of that aspect is in there. And if that aspect count is greater than zero, then we're going to record it into a variable and print it out to the screen. You ready? So let's run the scan essentia function next. And what we should find out is that we've got a jar with 56 cognito and 11 prodicio. Let's see, 56 cognito and 11 prodicio. Nice. We've got aqua 24, modus 1. Modus 1, aqua 24. And we've got herba 64 and terra 39. And I'll do a separate video that really covers more of the programming, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to want to understand this more in depth than I'm currently explaining it. And I'll do that. But again, the point of this video is to teach you guys how to think and how to write like a programmer so that you kind of get an idea of all right he's not just writing all this code at once he's decided to break it down into manageable pieces right get one function working so this is done we don't have to worry about this we know that we've got a piece of code here that can figure out which aspects uh, are stored on which items and now we've got a separate piece of code that we know can scan and read all the information in all the jars and such nice let's move on so real quick, I want to get a count of how many ethereal essences exist. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, by 6 is 48, plus 1 is 49. So we need 49 slots. So, so far I've got 12, and I'm going to basically fill in uh, to the point where I've got 49 of these slots. Cool? So guys, I'm just connecting up the last of the connections here. And what I've done is kind of wrapped around the entire building. Uh, I counted out that we have 49 aspects, right? So I've made sure that we have 49 uh, peripheral proxies. 12 on each side is 24. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 26. So that would be almost 50, but this is minus 1, so 49, right? So we're going to need a few more jars here, aren't we? Let me craft them up. How many am I going to need? 6, 12, 15, and 5. 20 more jars. So just to be sure that we never have too much Essentia laying around, I'm going to convert all my Essentia jars into, uh, you guessed it, which one is it? This way or this way? Does the jar have to be empty for this to work? 
All right, now I'm clearly forgetting the recipe for that jar type. Uh, but I want them all to be uh, the, you know, always emptying jar type, so void jar. Oh, it's blaze powder now? That used to be an ender pearl. I have to assume that the recipe has changed. Okay, cool. So I remember the recipe correctly. It's just hasn't or changed it on me. So let's say we're going to want a few more of these. So let's zip back to the base and pulverize these things. We're going to want 48-ish in total of this. Because we have one or two already that are, you know, void jars. That should be good. Nice. Uh, insufficient V. So that'll get recharged. It's all Perdicio. No big deal. And we'll be back in a minute when we're ready to do more. I guess if I'm doing this, I should probably go like that. And now we're at 10.5. See? Nice. I'll come back once I've converted this. Just out of curiosity, can I switch this mid? No, it has to be empty. Well, that's annoying. All right, well, we'll figure that out. I'm going to make all the jars void jars and then come back. So, guys, I'm just uh, transferring some of the Essentia that I have so far from regular old water jars into uh, these jars. And I'm just emptying them if I have less than eight. I figure, eh, it's not the end of the world if I lose a little, right? We're about to build a system that will automatically fill this stuff up, so yeah, I'll live. Cool. So I'll be back in a minute once I've continued upgrading all these jars to the void jars. Alright, might be just a little bit short on this. Yeah, short by one, but don't worry. It'll fill up pretty quickly, and that should be enough. There we go. And that should be the last of the void jars. Cool. There we go. So now all of our joys are, our jars are void jars. Let's pop over to our base because there's one more thing I want to make, and that is a label. So jar labels are cool. They come courtesy of Foamcraft, and it's just a regular crafting recipe. All you need is some ink and a slime ball and four pieces of paper. So we're going to want about 50 of these. So let's get, first off, how are we for ink? Eh, not so good. That'll get us 20s worth. Uh, slime balls, I think we're okay on. Uh, paper we can get easily because we have lots of sugar cane, right? We've auto been crafting that. So we'll do that. That should be good. And you notice that you just heard downstairs, right? My sugar cane just broke. Nice. Uh, the joys of having an automated system. All right, let me go get some more ink and we'll be right back. By the way, this is awesome. <laughs> Great way to collect ink if you have a magnet and this wand. So I'm going to craft about 50 of these. Uh, technically need 49, so I'll get the 52, and we'll be good there. And now, what's cool about these labels is it'll force the type of aspect that's allowed in the jar, even if the jar is empty. So typically, uh, Cognito is the only thing allowed in this jar, right? Nothing else is allowed in here. Unless, of course, this jar were to be completely empty, then anything would be allowed in there. Well, we don't want to allow anything in here, so we're going to make it always have Cognito. So all we got to do is label the jars that already have liquids in them, and we'll be in good shape. Sweet. That's cool. So we'll continue to label these jars going forward. So let's recap where we're at. We have a bunch of uh, these things. I'm going to go turn all these on, by the way. So I should be able to activate all these now because there's a jar in front of them. If you tried to activate this without a jar in front of it, uh, it would fail to activate. So just keep that in mind. If you right click this and it doesn't turn red and it doesn't say it activated, it's probably because there's no jar or you know anything in front of the peripheral proxy thing. Cool. So now we should be able to analyze all the jars on the network and figure out what's in them. At least that's the plan. So there, there. Oh, we disconnected one. It's all good. Cool. So I think I wouldn't mind having my computer down in the basement because there's really not room in this area here for the computer to be, and I think it would look better being down in the basement. So let's pop downstairs here, and we know where our peripheral proxies are connected up to, so it's probably right through here. I should be able to tap into it, right? And if that's the case, then I just have to, yeah, there we go. 
run some networking cable down the line. So it doesn't actually matter where I tap in at, you know, aside from the fact that there's water there, of course. Shift click, by the way. There we are. Cool. And now we can run this down and we can have the computer down here. I haven't decided if this is exactly where I want it to be, but it'll work for now as we're testing out and building our little program here that should handle this. So I'll pop down the computer here and we'll put the modem on like so, activate the modem. And now we don't want to play with the find Essentia thing because we don't have the chest plugged in yet. So we'll just comment out that line and see if scan Essentia works. Nice. Look at that. That is cool. All right. So we'll be back in a minute. So because playing on computers is slightly less fun than touchscreen monitors, we're of course going to go with a touchscreen monitor. And that's what I've just went ahead and crafted. So let's put that in place. Fill this in just a little bit and... So touchscreen monitors are going to be awesome for this build. Let me do a little programming off camera and then we'll be back. So as you can see, I just wrote a little bit of code that writes out to the monitor. So the next part of this build, of course, was getting this stuff to write to the monitor. So again, you want to go ahead and chunk up your program into individual pieces. So I've written a little bit of code here, which again, I'll explain in a separate episode, that basically goes through and finds all the Essentia that we already discovered and stored in a variable and writes it out to the screen in a nice, interesting way. And I simply made it so that if the number of Essentia is less than 20, make it red. If it's between 20 and 40, make it yellow. And if it's gray, greater than 40, make it green. Cool. So guys, as you can see, the Aspects program is continuing to grow, and we're adding more and more functions here to do more and more things. What I've got it doing now is similar to, and pretty much what I've been doing is um, rewriting some of the code and adopting some of the code that I used in the previous season, like way back when, when I first wrote this. But I've now got it to the point where I can right-click on any one of these words, like Perdicio, and it'll give me the option to refill the Perdicia uh, Essentia by a certain amount. So you can see currently it contains eight, which is pretty much accurate. And if I want to add one to it, I can do that, or I can do five, or I can do 10. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and I can hit cancel to cancel it out. I haven't yet configured it so that it can actually move the uh, aspects of the stuff that I need from point A to point B, but we'll get to that eventually. All right, guys, so you can see I've gone ahead and set up a chest down here with one of each of these ethereal essences. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't have quite a lot of them yet. If we look in our uh, AE system here, uh, we've got most of them. We had about one of every one, so that was good. Uh, but we've already used up the one and only one of a couple of them that we had gotten. So we definitely have to have a lot more wisps going on before this becomes a really good system uh, for collecting these ethereal essences. Um, but in the end, I think we should be in pretty good shape. So what's our next step? That's a good question. Uh, we'll probably want to analyze everything. So I'm just gonna run uh, some networking cable here so that we can connect into this thing. So let's say, we're gonna wanna run some stuff back here. So we'll probably want to tap into, there's two things I'm going to want to have here. Uh, we're going to want to have an aspectalizer. And we're going to want the chest. And the chest is not a solid block, so we're going to need another one of those. We're going to want probably two of them from open peripherals. Two more peripheral proxies, I believe, is what I'm going to want. And let's see what else we've got by way of chests. I'm going to grab another iron one instead of wood. Would probably be a good idea. So we're going to need another peripheral proxy. Hmm, that's going to make things a little tricky. But I'll figure it out. Probably going to want this here. And we'll want a peripheral proxy on that thing. So this is becoming a complex build, but that shouldn't be a surprise to you because what we're doing is pretty darn complex. Um, and then finally, we're just gonna want a peripheral proxy on this thing here. So let's do that 
under the ground. We want that tapped into there. Cool. Activate, activate, and activate. Cool. So that looks all pretty good. So now let's do a couple more things. Actually, I just discovered I'm definitely going to need um, to make a little change here. So let's activate this guy. So you want two different types of chests because I'm going to look for an iron chest and a gold chest. So this guy was what exactly? That was iron zero. So iron zero and gold zero. So that's going to help me. Be right back. And as a matter of fact, I just thought better of my design here. The gold chest actually has to be on top of the iron chest. And I'll explain why in just a minute. But let's connect that up to there. All right, gold zero is back on. So the gold chest will hold everything. The Or the iron chest will hold everything. The gold chest will be, um, I'll show you what that's for in a minute. And then uh, the aspectalizer, that's going to go towards uh, scanning. Cool. So now I've made a minor change to the program. Uh, instead of trying to build this list of Essentia based on the jars up there, I build the list of Essentia based on the existence of each of these things. Cool, right? So uh, what we can do now is see all the aspects that we don't have, like Panis. We have zero of that. So uh, I think in previous versions of this program that was an issue, and now it's no longer an issue. So uh, that was a quick and easy change to make. So now I can, for example, request Vacuous and handle that. Cool. Now the other thing that I needed to change is when I had this program before it was built around mana beans which had one of each aspect in them. Uh, but these guys have two of each aspect on them. So you can see we get two Bestia, we get two Tellum, we get two Humanus. So we need to make sure the program understands that so that when I request getting six it's going to move three of these items instead of six of these items. But we'll get to that because we haven't quite written that part of the code yet. So the plan that I want to do, guys, is I want to be able to decide how much of Terra I need, for example, and I want to get that into one of the boilers up there that breaks it down, right? So I figured, why don't we just move it from the chest that it's currently in into the gold chest, and then we'll pipe it up there through some kind of piping system. Seem pretty straightforward? I thought so. So let's see. Real quick and easy code that uh, you know won't take more than a second to show you is down here. So you can see obviously I've been writing lots of code and I'm just going to pop down to the part where this is applicable. So we've got lots of code been going on between cuts here. Uh, I've been figuring out where I'm clicking, refreshing the screen, uh, calculating how much Essentia we need, and I think this is the one I'm looking for. So we're basically going to push the item up, so from this chest push it up into the golden chest because that C is the iron chest. Uh, which inventory slot are we pulling from? Remember we stored all the different types of Essentia in an array called ESS. Uh, so that's going to figure out which slot to pull from. The fill amount, which we're requesting divided by two, because everything is two. So if I'm asking for six Terra, for example, uh, it will be six divided by two. We want to move three Terra essences. Cool. And because of the way the code's written, you can only ever add by two and into slot one in the gold slot there. So uh, actually, I don't even know if I need to put that. So I'm going to remove that line and see if it just goes wherever I want. That should actually be cool because I don't want it always to go into slot one. So if we do aspects here, what we'll see is uh, gold slot is empty. If we say Terra plus 10, for example, that should move when I click execute fill request five aspects. Okay, watch. Execute fill request. And five Terra Essence. Cool. Uh, now, if I decided that I also wanted to get, I don't know, six Ignis. So let's find Ignis. Where's that at in here? There it is. Let's say six more of that, please, and execute. And that should have moved three. Beautiful. All right, guys. Now, the next piece of this puzzle is we're going to want to keep this chest populated with as many of uh, these ethereal essences as possible. And I'm going to throw smooth stone in there for the time being. That might register as Terra, but we'll find out. Uh, but I'll probably wind up just cutting it off, so instead of looping through all the uh, slots in the chest, we'll go another route. Uh, but what we want to do is throw an export bus on this guy. So we'll do this. 
Um, and we're going to go ahead and say export any ethereal essences that you can. But we want to make sure that this thing will export all the ethereal essences, not just the Terra one. So to do that, we're going to want to get ourselves a fuzzy card, and that is made like so. Uh, the fuzzy card should allow this thing to uh, go ahead. So we'll match any... Yeah, match any, I think, is the fuzzy comparison we're going to want. Let's run this line straight over back there. So let's jump into bat mode. That might be easier. By the way, technically, you don't need this peripheral proxy on the gold chest, I realized, after I rethought through how exactly this whole thing works. But I figured, let's keep it there in case I decide to want it. And if I want to move it later, I can. Come on now, I just want to put a light down. There we go. Lucky me, I just hit tons of dirt type stuff. So where am I at at this point? Oh, transvector interface. Nice. So I must be getting actually close to where I want to be. So let's tap into our AE system here. Cool. Um, and we can come right along here. And that should be good. Now this thing should be exporting. So let's see if I'm right about this. Yes, see, look, things are exporting. So we're getting like, we've got two of those, we've got two of those. Let's see if we have by chance, accelerator cards require a advanced card and a Fluix Crystal. That I might need to actually go craft. So let's get an accelerator card or two. So let's do, we'll do two of these. We'll craft all of them and then we'll pop back down there and see if that works pretty well. Cause it's probably, it's, it's moving slowly now, right? We're gonna wanna speed that up a bit. So that, wow, there we go. Now we're talking, look at that, awesome. So we're gonna basically export and try and keep this chest uh, totally full of all the different ethereal essence types. Look at that, beautiful. It's exactly what I wanted to see, I like it. So now we're good, right? That is cool. Uh, so we'll throw this guy back in the system, get rid of all this junk that wound up in my inventory as a result of all that mining. And we've got a way to automatically transport all the ethereal essences that we're getting from the farm upstairs. Right? Um, get exported to that chest automatically, provided that the chest isn't already full with a stack of those. As soon as we use some from the chest, it'll automatically dump out again. And so it'll pull it out of the AE system into the chest. That'll be cool. Um, these guys are still spawning. I'm actually curious to see how my power system is doing because I do believe that we're actually a little bit, well, actually we're not bad on power, man. We're doing all right. Um, it is slowly but surely draining power, but I mean, our engines are doing a pretty darn good job of keeping up. I mean, we are probably, at a very small uh, lack of or, or loss of RF per tick. So that's kind of neat. I like that. Um, cool. I mean, we could put the power monitor on there if we wanted to and see what's up, but I'm going to hold off on that for now. What I do want to do is see if there's anything else we need to add to this system before we wrap up this episode, and we'll come back next episode to finalize a few things. So basically, we have a way. Uh, so let's take, for example, Ignis, right? If I wanted to go over here and find Ignis... There it is. And if I said that I want to refill the jar, boom, 16, execute fill request, done and done, you'll notice that it moved uh, a bunch of ethereal essence ignis up here. Nice. We had already had um, a handful, remember, from before. And you'll notice that it automatically refilled that ethereal essence. So let's put these guys back and do it again, right? So ignis, refill jar, 16. That should move eight. Nice. And you'll notice that, again, it automatically refilled the ethereal essences in here. Every time we remove some, boom, it instantly refills as long as we continue to have ethereal essences. That is kind of awesome. Um, so I'm excited about that. In fact, let's just double check. I want, well, it doesn't really matter too much, but I think we're good. Um, what else do we want to add to the system? Well, we're going to eventually set it up so that this gold chest, which I might turn into an ender chest, so just so I don't have to run wiring throughout the room, 
winds up dumping into this alchemical furnace so that the ethereal essence dump out into here. Now there's one other thing we need to account for, and that is that all of these ethereal essences have a ton of aurum on them, right? So this has two aurum, and this has two aurum, and this has two aurum. So we're gonna wanna probably wind up voiding the excess aurum that we have. Um, now that'll be okay because everything's going into a void jar. So for example, when we get, say, you know, a couple ignis here and we toss it into this, this guy is probably just going to take the Ignis and the Orum, and because they're going into Void Jars, it's no big deal. Nice. There you go. Good job, mister. Sweet. All right, so let's come back in a minute and see where we're at with everything. So guys, what I think I'll do is wrap up the episode here. We will come back next time. Oh, that's the worst place to land. Uh, let's try the other corner then. I'm going to set up an elevator system here so I can easily get down to where my computer is, and I just happened to be that that was absolutely not workable. Did not plan that too well. So we'll come back next time and we'll implement the system where the things that land in the gold chest get cooked up. And there's probably a few more changes that I might want to do. We'll come up with those as we go along. So for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Not too much programming, right? But I definitely gave you guys an idea of the workflow that it goes into writing the programs. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Like I said at the beginning, please leave me some feedback and be like, yeah, Dyer, that was cool. Not too much programming, but enough to get the idea. Uh, you know, hopefully that's the feedback, right? Because that's what I'm going for. But you guys can let me know. That's the great thing about YouTube commenting systems. Cool. All right, guys, take it easy.